Hey guys, Chris from Ultimate Recycler. We're doing part two now of my shop tour. We're going to go inside. Uh, part one was just a bit of a browse around outside. I'm um, just about to close today, but I thought, let's do a walk around. There's no customers at the moment. We'll do probably just one room, and I'll, I'll do a few parts in this video so that people are really interested in my shop. They can have a bit of a browse at each room. I'll try to go slow enough that you can see some prices. And uh, yeah, check it out. Okay, let's pause at my signs. Here's my current window shopping policy. Because I've had a few lockdowns in Victoria and on during the week I'm not often open, but uh, I like to dress my windows up and people can give me a call if they spot something they want. So you can read that and I will post items out. So if you see anything in this video that you like, um, obviously if it's down the track a bit, the item's probably sold, but you know, shoot us a message. Now, I, my open and close times a, a bit vague uh, I like to have it that way I really only say that I'm mainly open weekends but I quite often do a lot of other days uh, just depends what I've got going on in my life and I've got to keep you guys on YouTube happy so sometimes I'm out for that doing videos let's go in hear that creaky door I've imported that creak sound from um, Switzerland I don't know somewhere whoever sells good creaks that's where I got it from actually I kind of encourage it it gives the shop a good atmosphere so this is a very old building it's probably or oh, 1890s I believe now this front room has had a false ceiling put in and it has been plastered at some stage but as we get to the other rooms you'll see they're old lining boards and if we glance down at the floor they're really nice old pine floorboards that could probably tell a story or two now my shop's a little bit dusty and cobwebby I try to keep it as clean as I can I do get lots of compliments on how my shop's laid out uh, I'm a bit of a perfectionist and I'd love to have it all neat and clean and tidy but it's just a matter of time to do it um, I try to keep it as best as I can so in the window I put a lot of glassware we get a lot of um, as you can see drinking glasses uh, lamps of course I have my old bottles scattered around the place so I'm, most of you know I'm a bit of a bottle collector there's some nice jars here that I've put in recently they're 1920s um, AG storing jars I've got $10 each on those um, lovely blue down the front I like to put some colored glass in the window and I will do a bit of footage I might make it a, a part three or four or whatever we get up to I'll come down here at night when the when it's dark and I'll have all the insides here. I've got some bud lights inside the window there. Uh, the glassware looks really good at night and a lot of people, especially in, in the nicer weather, walk the streets and spot things and then they come back the next day and say, oh, I wanted to buy this and this and this, which is great. These are, other than being beautiful blue, these are piano insulators. Now there should be a set of four, but quite often you don't get a complete set. And they were designed to actually sit your heavy cast iron frame piano on. Now, they insulate the piano from the floorboards. I have been told that it, it gives the piano a better sound. But I think probably the main reason by having a piano up on casters is that it doesn't roll around because pianos are on wheels. Uh, there's a few teapots and things in there. I like to dress the windows up. You might see those red things, it looks a bit bizarre. They're actually candles. And I think I wrote on the tag that it's been a particularly hot day. The candles are a little saggy um, and they've set like that. So let's walk along the window. Um, message me if you spot something and you'd really like to know a price on. But then again, it depends on when you see this video because I do turn over my stock pretty quickly. So we'll just scan around a little bit. Most of these bottles are, look, I think I've got 30 on that. That's a nice old Fowler's for Cola one, nicely embossed. Uh, 30 on that one uh, that's an internal thread march and so fairly common but this is in excellent condition I put 30 on that as well uh, I do get a good range of bottles this one's more of a 1950s probably a metho or terps it's a Melbourne bottle ten dollars on that uh, bottles do turn over all the time a bit more glassware up here in the window most of this stuff is relatively cheap my shop is not a high-end antique shop we do get some nice old stuff, but a lot of our stuff is, is more bric-a-brac, but still a bit of age. We've got $10 on that. That's a nice glass comport. It's a pretty early one. There's bubbles in the glass. There's a bit of wear to the base. It'll be what they call pressed glass. Um, so $10 is pretty cheap for that. It's probably not in 20s piece. Uh, little sugar bowl and milk jug there. We've got 10 the pair. Uh, that one I think is an Avon 
aftershave or perfume or something still with the contents uh, another comport there uh, these a lot of people will remember these from the 60s or early 70s anodized aluminium uh, I've got $20 on that set it's not a complete set um, but they look really good in the window some great color uh, we get a lot of novelty things there's a bottle opener here just $5 there's a nice old bone handle bread knife in here for $15 uh, a lot of English China doesn't bring anywhere near what it used to uh, 15 on that one this looks like a James Kent I think James Kent bowl $10 not damaged really nice piece it will sell we like stuff to sell fairly quickly I usually say to people I'd rather sell it than dust it is uh, a little set here um, it's English China we've just got 25 on the set um, I don't think there's any damage quite often these pedals get broken but that looks okay little ornament there for $5 this little dog is a nice one it's actually German it's quite an early one but it's got half its front foot missing uh, I've just got $4 on that so um, you know obviously it's priced accordingly had it been in better condition it might have made $20 uh, I've taken to sticking a bit of smaller stuff in the window this little cabinet I've got some watches and various things there some of you might remember these little um, kit little plastic kits that came in cornflakes packets or cereal packets in the 70s I think I've got $20 each on those they're unopened a little bit of jewelry some more watches but the idea of putting that in there is that people browsing at night can have a good look at all the stuff I try and make sure all the price tags face the window and uh, people can browse until their hearts content uh, a bit of general China some really 50s great 50s glasses in there uh, that's a full set I think I think they're all there and I've got 30 on that set and I'm surprised they haven't sold they haven't been there that long though and you know we haven't been open much a uh, bit of colored glass up the top there some more plates now this cabinet used to be out the back where I lived out the back and I did a video on actually moving this cabinet out here and I'll put the link up the top if I can find it I've got a lot of my ginger beers in here these are part of my personal collection but I decided that rather than have them out the back and not being visible to anyone I might as well enjoy them in the shop and put a price on them and I actually have sold a few I priced them up a little bit uh, many of you won't be interested at all in uh, you can see me looking at my camera now many won't be interested in Australian bottles but they sell pretty well most of these are around oh, between 50 and probably about 300 for the rarer ones and I've got to get some more into there but it's a great cabinet it's an old general store cabinet and I've got a bit of Australian pottery in this side. There's some Remude and John Campbell, some Fowler's Ware, uh, a little bit of more recent stuff. I think that's Studio Anna or something. Oh, those mugs are Guy Boyd, actually. Uh, so I like to have a bit of Australian pottery in here. It doesn't bring what it used to bring, but it looks great in the cabinet. Uh, the air conditioner is buzzing away there. In fact, the air conditioner vibrates the cabinet and the ginger beers walk around on the glass shelf. So. I might have to do something about that okay so we've just come across the front I'll scan back so that you can get a perspective walked into the shop I've got some bottles on that cabinet over the other side there and we've gone left I've got a few pieces of furniture here just a little cabinet and an old cedar table a glass display cabinet here which I need to reorganize a bit there's a really nice large old Victorian platter at the bottom we've got 30 on uh, amber glass sweet set we've got 30 on that it's quite deco a bit of more modern pottery a large English saucer just three dollars so you can see a lot of our stuff's pretty cheap got a stamp album there full of stamps we've just got 50 on the whole album I don't know much about stamps so someone might get a bargain there and as I've mentioned a few times I'm more than happy for people to get an absolute bargain if they find a super treasure in my shop well they'll come back and check it out all the time and uh, that's a good thing for me and I've still made a profit on it I said to someone once regarding books and let's turn back to this old cabinet here I've got a few old books now I'm not much of an expert on books I do check eBay completed listings sometimes and do a bit of searching when I have time but I said to a customer once that if you find a rare book in my shop worth a million dollars good luck to you I'm happy just don't tell me um, so yeah I mean even if he did tell me what would it matter I'd probably curse the fact that I should have researched it 
but um, I don't think there's too many books worth a million dollars. Uh, so we've just got a bit of bric-a-brac on this shelf. I do put some old suitcases and things. That one's obviously got a broken handle. The old Gladstone bag, many of you would remember those. I think my dad used to take his footy gear when he played football in a Gladstone bag. Uh, sometimes called doctor's bags. I've got 30 on that one. This suitcase is a nice one, but the handle's just broken, as I said. We've only got 15. I've marked that down from 25 to 15. Um, possibly it may not have had a broken handle when I had 25 on it and the customer might have accidentally done it. $10 on that one, a little bit bent up. And just lots of general bric-a-brac. Some of it is the sort of stuff you'd see in an op shop or a thrift store, but I try not to fill my shop with more pedestrian items like coffee cups and glasses and just normal plain plates or dinner, modern dinner sets. So I tend to give those away or have them really cheap or even pass them on to our local op shop. Hopefully if I'm going slow enough here you can see the prices on things. Uh, I know that I get carried away in telling you about stuff and I forget to stop and slow down and show you prices. These are quite collectible. These are vintage fabric patches from the 70s. I think I collected some of these actually. They came from the farm so they could have been my, mine or my brother's collection. Um, and a lot of the towns had these as souvenir items back when you'd also buy souvenir teaspoons. But people would collect these and throw sew them onto... Um, yeah, I would have collected that before I'd ever been to this area and Shepparton's now just up the road. And they sew them onto blankets or jackets and they look really good. You know, they're just a fabric patch. But I've got $10 each on those. They seem to sell really well on eBay, but unless I've got something special, I couldn't be bothered eBaying. And if I sell them through the shop, I obviously don't have fees. Uh, another thing I remember from my childhood, and these weren't from the farm, and I think I had some there somewhere, were the old Commando War Comics. There's a few different ones. These are War Picture Library ones. Most of these are 1970s. Could even be 60s, some of these. And if I remember correctly, it took me about half an hour to read a war comic. I could almost set my watch by it. And I used to love reading these. Uh, not that I was pro-war, but I think kids just enjoy the old sort of shoot 'em up stories. And a lot of them had planes. And I remember trying to sketch some planes. Uh, there we go. Look at that. I think I actually did a sketch one time of a, a Spitfire shooting bullets or something. But anyway, that's just something of my childhood. And I have sold quite a lot of these. People often buy three for ten, uh, and usually people remember them from their childhood as well. And that, that's what drives a lot of sales in my shop, is emotions, people remembering things from their parents or their grandmothers. Mad Comics, another one. Um, so there we go. And of course, we do need to check these. I mean, if they're in excellent condition and they're a very low number, it might be well worth checking eBay, because you could do a lot better than what I'm selling them at. But most of these they're in a bit rough condition and I don't think they're going to be particularly valuable. Uh, encyclopedias and those sort of books are really difficult to sell. In fact, a lot of charity shops won't even take them anymore. Uh, this set here is a complete set, 1960s. And they're a little bit different. They're not your standard um, Encyclopedia Britannica. These are more of a technical one, I think. And they're quite nice books. So I just put 20 on the complete set. Uh, they're actually still here, as you can see, so they may not be worth 20 for the set. It's funny, I have a lot of people look around my shop and say, oh, look, we've got one of these at home, and look what it's worth. And sometimes I'll chime in and say, well, you know, technically it's not worth that because it hasn't sold. Just got $5 on a little swan ornament. That's quite a modern one. So, you know, what something's worth is, is a, a very hard to describe uh conception it's not you know these are definitely worth that and that's what they sell for everywhere at any given time the prices constantly change i've mentioned numerous times that english china has dropped a lot there's a nice beswick dish in the middle we've got 25 dollars on that it's undamaged back in the 80s that might have made 50 dollars. you know prices have changed a lot there's a really nice piece down the bottom we'll get it out and have a look uh, it's not particularly decorative, but it's a lovely blue. This is Carlton Ware, and I think it's the Blue Royale or something. I know they have a red, a red which is a Rouge Royale. Uh, it's just marked Carlton Ware on the back. It's English, it's not the Australian design. But it's absolutely screaming mint condition. There's no wear to the colour. 
there's nowhere to the gilting on the side I've got 40 on that and it hasn't sold so look it looks good in the cabinet I think sooner or later someone will pay 40 for that I don't need to have my prices so that everything sells first weekend because then all my cabinets would be empty and I'd have nothing to sell the following weekend and I probably wouldn't be able to keep up with wrapping and taping, taking people's cash um, so I like to structure my prices so that things sell in a reasonable amount of time anything that sits here for a long time I will discount uh, now this cabinet has lights and it's made it very reflective on those plates you can see there's a set in the middle I've only got five dollars on the lot it's Avon China it's quite pretty there's a bell and a couple of different cups and a plate um, so we do keep things cheap this stuff is known as Crestware and it used to be quite collectible uh, I've got two dollars a piece on this and they're undamaged let's open this door and have a look so these are English or some of them are Czech Czechoslovakian and they're probably I'm not too sure in the era maybe 1940s maybe 30s they might be pre-war and they're just various little vases and urns and that sort of thing and they all have crests of various things so quite collectible they used to be two dollars each I have sold a fair few of them but there's still a lot there at two dollars each so yeah I've just got to structure my prices so that things sell I can't make a living if nothing sells and if it too much sells I can't keep up so yeah it's just trying to find that equilibrium there's a bit of Japanese stuff in there so there's a lot of spaces in this cabinet I need to refill it soon now these trios featured in a video recently uh, I did an unboxing of some China which came from a, a recent deal and if you want to look that up actually I'll put the link in here as well I've priced them per trio and I often do this with dinner sets I'll break them up and sell them per uh, either trio or a stack of plates or a stack of bowls or, or the jug and the sugar bowl separately so I've got $30 each on these and they're a really nice English trio that probably be early 1900s and $30 each by six is $180 so that's where I can get some great value people still collect trios not a lot of people but people do they're in perfect condition great if you're having a high tea or something and I'm much more likely to sell one trio every so often at $30 than to sell a dinner set at say two or three hundred because you can't put these dinner sets in the microwave you can't put them in the dishwasher and most young people just aren't interested so oh, I just got down on my knees and it was a bit difficult to get up so to give you some perspective I've just come down this side of the shop we haven't really looked up the inside yet just got a little whatnot stand here uh, just some various plates and things on it there's a Wedgwood plate here uh, some of these are quite modern they were still making these into the 80s and 90s I'm not sure if they still do we've only got ten dollars on that uh, this glass head lots of people want to buy this glass head off me I don't think it's overly old but um, it's not for sale I just put hats on it and moving along we've got some more books here these are a set of probably more modern uh, reprints of older novels uh, I've got $20 on that set 1960s I think according to the tag I don't remember they've been in here for a little while uh, but in essence I've got 20 bucks on it I'd take 10 we're usually happy to haggle I've got a sign somewhere that displays my haggling policy and I'll find it before I finish this video now this is old piano frame and I did a video on scrapping out a piano and this is the frame it sits in my shop I put a hundred dollars on it and lots of kids absolutely love playing with this you can get all sorts of sinister music and it keeps kids amused for ages and half, half the time their parents have to call them to, to leave the shop I put a little uh, drumstick type stick here now that may not be very musical but it's fun for kids so this piano harp um, as I said I've uh, wrecked this piano I've actually sold a lot of parts off it and I've just left this main frame here in the shop for kids to play with and one day I might get lucky and get a hundred dollars for it I wouldn't have even got 50 for the whole piano so it was an exercise in breaking something down and seeing where the value was um, the hundred dollars really represents the effort to get it out uh, I'm quite happy for it to stay here I don't need the room at the moment and uh, it's just really cool it makes the shop a bit different 
All right, we get a lot of fabric from house lots. Uh, linen closets always give up a lot of um, various, uh, these are all aprons, and then there's some linen pieces, doilies, tablecloths, some more aprons, some really retro stuff. And these sell quite well. Now, I don't have a lot of um, fabric and clothing in my shop. Christine has a lot more than I do. And we'll take you for a tour around her shop at some stage. She's right next door. We run separate shops. Um, get a lot of tea towels. They sell really well. Um, so I like to have these hanging up here on this frame. And it's amazing how often we do sell things from there. Uh, also, here's some more tablecloths, some very retro ones. And I mentioned blankets earlier. These classic 60s era wool blankets sell very very well got 30 on that I think it's got some moth holes in it I think I'd normally put 50 on a double blanket like that uh, this chest of drawers here is what they call a blouse chest it's just some drawers basically lined in fabric and it's a little wonky it came out of a house I bought some stuff out of recently they just wanted it all gone I put $50 on that uh, I'd expect that to sell for 50 I don't do a lot with big furniture because I don't have the room and whereas that's quite light and easy to move in and out. A little modern stand here, I've just got a few trinkets and books and things on, nothing very exciting there. And back to this glass cabinet at the front. Uh, on top of this cabinet we have a dinner set which is a Grindley set, it's not complete. I've just put AF because which means that there's faults and it's probably got a few chips and yeah there's a chip right on top there and some of the plates might be cracked. There's only three cups. I put 30 on the lot. Um, I'm sure that'll sell. Someone might have the same pattern at home and want to match it up. And this little display cabinet here used to be a cutlery canteen. And I took the top off it and put a piece of glass on the top and took out all the inside mouldings and it makes a great little display cabinet. And I might do a video on making one of those at some stage because I have some of these in storage in my container. Um, I had a lot of crystals and gemstones in here and they've all sold. In fact, I sold the last two today. So, uh, great little display cabinet there. Uh, what else? Let's go back around the front here. Uh, a few more English plates. A candle holder and it's supposed to have a wire frame in it. It's actually like a rose bowl. And it's just silver plate, EPNS. And silver plate's pretty hard to sell. I've only got $5 on that. A few more books and magazines on the front table here. Uh, a lot of these old hardcover books, um, they can sell. It just depends on the author, and a lot of them are usually in pretty poor condition by the time we get them. I do usually do a quick check on the author online. There's some astronomy magazines from the 80s. I think they were my brother's. And just a few other random books here. And a few watches. We put batteries in all these quartz watches. And I'm trying to teach myself some more watch repairs. But it's worth our while putting batteries in them if they're in good condition otherwise. Uh, righto, so we're back standing just inside the front door looking at the counter. I've got the old um, university students bookshelf here made out of planks of wood and bricks when you're doing things on the cheap. I used to have a nice Art Deco bookshelf there and someone bought it and I cursed that. I should have put the price up a lot higher but anyway, no one's going to buy my planks and bricks because they're not for sale. I use this spot just to put random books and magazines um, and it changes by the day. Uh, I have some mystery objects in here which we, I like to have a little bit of fun with my customers. I'll actually lay these out and do a separate video on mystery objects and see how you guys go. We have some little ink bottles up here and some perfumes, a little bit of jewellery. I don't have very much jewellery. Christine does a lot more next door. and. This is a lovely old lever soap um, display cabinet, probably from the very early 1900s. And it still actually smells like soap inside. It's amazing. And I've, I've been offered lots of money for that. I have seen one on eBay sell for about 500. Uh, one guy offered me 800 once for it, but I really don't want to sell it. It goes so well on my counter. And it's a great spot to put a little bit of jewelry, a bit of bling. There's some gold, gold chains. Uh, really nice German 1950s uh, fashion jewellery there. Uh, nine karat gold tie clip. Uh, just a few bits and pieces. We don't, I don't have a lot of valuable jewellery. In fact, I'm, I'm stashing my gold elsewhere. I don't want it in the shop because, other than a few little bits, because the, um, the risk of someone breaking in and pinching the gold at some stage is a bit of a worry. 
Uh, it's an old shop here and it's very hard to keep people out if they really want to get in. Uh, and what more the worry would be that if I spotted something nice in this cabinet, that they'd smash the cabinet. So often when I go home at nights, I actually leave the back door of the cabinet open. Not that I'm encouraging people to steal, but I'd, there's nothing in there worth a lot. I would rather keep the cabinet and they take everything inside. But then again, I'd rather they not take anything and, you know, be nice. <laughs> okay, so... Around this side, we've just got a few bookshelves. There's a nice timber pedestal there. We've got $75 on that. Uh, a lot of my shelving and display cabinets I don't actually have for sale. Um, sometimes if I get too many of them, I will price them. I've got some stuff under the bed I've got to feed into the shop. The bed itself is a an old hospital bed. It's a bit hard to tell because I've got too much stuff on there. It's early 1900s. Uh, I think I've got 150 on that. But I don't mind if it doesn't sell. It's a good place to stack up blankets and things. There's an old Masonic Lodge uh, certificate here in a really nice old frame, probably 1920s. Uh, and in fact, that's a good date for the frame. If we look at the certificate, it's 1925. So when you see these nice old oak timber frames, around about 1920s is the way to date them. So. That's a, a good one that came from the local lodge here. They closed up. The family didn't want, uh, the, all the families were offered things and none of them wanted it. So we bought the, the remaining contents. A nice old cedar table here, which just came in. I haven't actually priced this yet. Uh, what else have we got? This video is starting to go on and I'm only getting around one room. So we'll certainly do separate parts for each room. There's a little cabinet here. This cabinet would be called a music cabinet. And it probably would have been made for storing pianola rolls in. Uh, now we polished up the top of it. Actually, my daughter Jess did an excellent job of that. It's actually only ply, but it's a beautiful American oak. Came up really good. I think that was that actually, if I remember rightly, had some clear contact over it and then brown paint or something. It took a bit to clean up, but it came up really well. Uh, more knickknacks here. I do have a few clocks. Most of you know that I like to fix clocks, and I will fix them up to put them in the shop. Uh, this nice old kitchen clock, I think it's a Ansonia or a Sessions or something. I did get that one going and it runs beautifully. Uh, these two plaster dogs, they've been in the shop for ages and I only put them up the top there. I forgot they were there. I had them down on the carpet and when Coco was with me the other day, she took offence to these dogs and barked at them for endless amount of time. So I had to move the dogs upstairs. Uh, I'm not sure if they had a few crosswords with her or they ganged up on her because there's two of them and one of her who knows who knows how a dog's brain works uh we've got some nice little etched glasses here we often get odd glasses because as you'd expect most of them don't survive the years and sets get broken up they're nice etched glasses i think i've only got five on the set of three just three slot all slightly different oh that might be the same as the first one there's a nutcracker here probably 1960s timber nutcracker uh, oh, sorry I'm forgetting to tell you prices hopefully you can see the tags what do we have on that one $30 uh, the clock here I've got 195 on it it does run well because we've been closed over lockdown I've forgotten to wind it uh, nice Edwardian uh, tea set here uh, in really good condition actually I've got 125 on that but, um, you know, if someone slapped a $100 note on the counter, they'd get it. We're usually happy to negotiate when things, certainly when things have been here for a while. Uh, this cabinet, I like to put some crystal in the back. It always looks nice back here. Uh, some of it's just pressed glass. That's a dressing table set there. We've got 30 on that. Uh, just some random crystal dishes. Most of them are only, oh, there's only $3 each on those ones. $5. Uh, that segment edition in the middle, we've got 10 on it. It's probably just glass. Uh, there's a Stuart crystal bowl at the back. We've only got five on. So you can see our prices are pretty cheap because we do like to sell things. I sold, uh, sold just about an hour ago. I sold a big bowl out of that corner. It was Stuart crystal. And there's another one here, Stuart crystal, which I've got 35 on. Uh, the cabinet in the corner, we've got a few teapots and a Toby jug or a character jug. I can never remember which is which. Uh, some older English china, and we've got, what's that one, Paragon China six-person setting. So we've priced that as a set for 100 bucks. We're probably a bit ambitious there. It might really take it 
to go down to 50 to sell. Uh, I didn't price them separately because the trios aren't pretty enough, basically. So rather than try and get $5 a trio, we will, I'll probably drop the price next time I have a moment on that one. Another old cabinet here. Now, we don't always sell these cabinets. I think I've got this one priced because... Um, although we put a high price on them and sometimes my price uh, on some things is really so that no one buys it and then it just stops people asking they'll probably go out saying oh that shop's dear but I think if they browse around they'll know that my prices are pretty reasonable um, there's some nice ones in here that trio there is a really nice one I think it's Royal Dalton just trying to look at the price tag $50 on that one uh, some more trios down there 15 on that one it must have a small crack and these Meekin trios are $10 each. And a bit more silver plate, another silver plate tea set, and some other cups and saucers. Uh, what's up the top? We have a large wash jug. That's a really nice jug, that one. I've got 70 on that. I didn't think that was too expensive. It's not cracked or chipped. Uh, don't have the bowl with it though. But again, that's been here for a little while now. I would certainly do better than 70. Um, what have we got there? A brass rose bowl, ten dollars. It's possibly a, um, a copper right one. Now I don't have much jewelry on my board. I made this jewelry frame just out of a. It was an old print, and I took the print out and just put some board on it with some fabric, uh, and the pins will go into it. I don't have much there at the moment. Christine has a lot more jewelry next door, which is why I have that sign there. Um, and this little cabinet in here, I've got a few crystal serviette rings. Let's lift the lid up, get rid of the reflection. I need to go through some of this. There's some hat pins there. But I try and keep up with moving old stock. It just takes so much time to keep up with everything. This cabinet here opens from the back and customers can't get to the back of it, which is good because I keep my bed of silver in here. Uh, the big bowl at the back is um, 800 German silver, so it's 80% silver. It's a large bowl. I put 475 on that. I've seen them sell for quite a lot online. The little bowl in the middle there is, uh, I think you can, I don't know if you can read the tag, it's 1802 Georgian Sterling Silver, it's a salt cellar. We'll put 155 on that. We actually found that at a garage sale. Um, unbelievable, it was just in with some junk and we didn't realise it was Sterling Silver till we got home. The fork there is 1816 Georgian Silver, $85 there. Got some nice Sterling Silver salt cellars here. Um, and we always get random teaspoons in amongst other collections that turn out to be either sterling silver or 80% or silver. So that's my little silver cabinet. I do sell some things out of there and as you can see there's a few gaps so stuff does sell. Uh, we better finish this video up. It's gone for a long time and my coffee's gone cold while I've been talking to you guys. Uh, I've got some more light fittings up the top. All priced pretty cheaply. A few of my um, harder to get bottles that I've priced up a bit. There's a hundred dollars on that Sandhurst torpedo And there's a couple of cod bottles here marble bottles that I've got 175 on the Horsham one and 195 on the Heathcote one. They're a bit harder to get There's an old KB stubby. I think they were known as the hand grenade or something uh, That one's still full unopened. I've got 75 on that And there's just a few other bits of souvenir wear and some china and perfume bottles and various bits and pieces an old inkwell uh, I've just changed my angle because the light was getting a bit bad, the reflection the other way. We get a lot of old medical stuff, um, tins, uh, also tobacco tins. I haven't ver got very many tobacco tins at all at the moment. Uh, some old nugget tins. Uh, there's a post office letter scale there. We've got 65 on. Most of the tins are only 5 to 10 bucks. Uh, down the bottom, it's very hard to see through this glass. You get a little reflection, but they're just various knickknacks. Uh, bric-a-brac, some old playing cards, box of matches, just curios really, there's nothing particularly valuable. Uh, and I get a lot of stuff that I don't really know what to do with, um, just little odds and ends, so I just have a dollar uh, assorted bits and pieces. A few bits of jewellery here, we've got earrings and various other things, they're priced very cheap. And another box of assorted things, I think I've caught, what have I got here, small odds and ends, bibs and bobs, bits and pieces, or Omnium Gatherums, and I think that must be Latin. I can't remember. I wrote that a while back. Uh, but look, a dollar each. It's amazing how many people grab, you know, grab out five items, and there's five bucks. 
So that really, well, we haven't, I think we've done down this side, haven't we? That really completes this main room of my shop. Um, I've just got my counter here where all the, all the magic happens. Um, and then the hallway just goes down to the back residence area, which is now just a storage room. So that's the main room of my shop. Oh, we didn't look up. Everyone says you must look up. Uh, some old light fittings and various ones that I've actually got hanging up there. And I sometimes wire them to a plug and have them on. I've just turned some of the shop lights off actually. And uh, I put a lot of prints and paintings on the wall. Some of them I only price really for the frame. Uh, I do get some nicer pieces from time to time. Some old watercolours and that sort of stuff. What was down this back room? I forget now. There's an old pears print up the back here. And um, yeah, we get all sorts of artwork. Most of it's not worth a great deal. But uh, it looks good on the walls. And you can see here the walls and the ceiling of this old building is the old pine lining boards. So it's quite a nice old building. And it kind of suits the... Uh, the ambience I want to create in this old ware shop. Now you can see it's actually got dark outside. I've been filming this in between the odd late customer. Uh, the sun's almost gone down. Not that we had a lot of sunshine today. It was mostly cloudy and it's supposed to rain tonight. So this will finish part two of my shop walk around. Uh, there's bottles on this shop I didn't go through. Let's have a quick look at these before we go. Uh, a few Goldfield Blacks and things up the top there. Uh, really only $5 bottles these days. These ones are becoming more and more collectible. When I first started bottle digging, God, we'd almost drink out of these. And now the ceramic label bottles, Schweppes and Tarax, quite big brands out here in Australia. Well, Schweppes, I think, was worldwide. Uh, they're becoming quite collectible now, particularly in Good Nick. And there's some more down here. Uh, a lot of you will remember Cotties. Uh, Marchants were a well-known company. Boone's Bar was a Melbourne company. Hemley's was big in Victoria. And so was Cons, there's another Marchands. So these ceramic label bottles, or they're like a pyro label, I think they're called, they break down in the sun. And if anyone digs them up, if you're a bottle collector and you go digging, the, the ground really leaches away the colours. And eventually this finish goes really powdery and washes off. So anyone that's into bottles, I would suggest that if you get good condition ceramic label bottles, Keep them out of the sun and save them. I think they'll be a really good investment for future collecting. Of course, it depends on how many, you know, how big the company was. Uh, these companies had lots of bottles and I don't think they're ever going to be rare. But some of the harder to get ones may well appreciate a lot in value. Uh, there's most of these bottles I have on their shelf for five to ten dollars. Uh, Twenty on that whiskey one. Uh, might be a bit much. I might have to drop the price on that one. These old beers, 1880s. I've only got $3 on those. Uh, the Coca-Cola bottles from the 70s. These have one litre one side. And, oh, that's one litre both sides. Some of them have one litre. Oh, there you go. And 35 fluid ounces. So they're sort of mid, early to mid-70s. They're the crossover between Imperial and Metric in Australia. Uh, they bring about $15 or so, the big Coke bottles, if they're in good condition. And again... The ceramic label needs to be good on them. And there's just a few down the bottom, a Fanta. Uh, most people will remember Fanta. I don't know if you can buy it nowadays. I don't think you can. They got a bit dusty down the bottom. So I need to restock my bottle shelf again soon, but I do sell a lot of bottles and they're mostly between the five and $20 bracket there. Um, and there we go. So part three of this series, we might head to the kitchen room or we might go straight into the bloke's room. And that room, I sell the most stock in my shop out of the rest of it combined. The bloke's room is really popular. Lots of old tools and interesting bits and pieces. So we'll sign off now. And I've just finished packing up. And next time I get a chance, we'll do the next video and we'll explore the bloke's room. We'll see you then. Bye.